welcome to the medicine box i'm your host ekta batra and today we are talking about something that is becoming one of india's biggest health concerns obesity the numbers are hard to ignore nearly 1 in 4 indian women and men are now overweight or obese even our youngest are affected the number of overweight children under 5 has jumped from 2.1% to 3.4% in just a few years and here's what really stands out we are gaining weight together as a family today all adults are either overweight or obese in one in every fifth indian home a lancet study now predicts that by 2050 45 crore indians that's over a third of us could be overweight or obese and we may have one of the highest numbers of obese children in the world this isn't just about how we look obesity is now being seen as a chronic disease it often comes with a yo yo pattern of weight gain and loss and it plays a huge role in serious conditions like diabetes heart disease high blood pressure cancer and even alzheimers in fact 8 out of 10 people with type 2 diabetes are also overweight a combination doctors now call diabetesity but here's what's new for the first time in india we now have access to two globally talked about drugs monjaro and vigovi launched just weeks apart they've shown impressive weight loss results globally and they're stirring up a lot of buzz so the big questions are are they the game changers we need who should take them are they safe and what happens when you stop We're joined today by Dr. Ambrish Mittal and Dr. Sonali Kagne. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, Dr. Sonali, let's uh, kick off the show with you. If you could just give us the key differences between the three weight loss drugs that exist in India now: Vigovi, the injection by Novo Nordisk for weight loss; Ribelsis, which is the oral semaglutide by Novo Nordisk; and Munjaro by Eli Lilly. Okay, Vigovi and Ribelsis, the molecule is the same which is semaglutide the only difference is vigovi is an injection which is to be taken once a week and the oral tablet is to be the ribelsis which is an oral tablet it is to be taken once a day if we compare the weight reduction efficacy of these two molecules vigovi is much better for weight reduction as compared to ribelsis both these uh, the semaglutide molecule is uh, the, it belongs to the group of glp1 receptor agonist whereas now coming to monjaro monjaro is a dual glp1 and gip receptor agonist and it is also an injection form which is to be taken once a week the weight reduction efficacy of monjaro is currently the highest amongst all the molecules which are available so it is to the extent of 22% average weight reduction compared to 17% with vigovi and around 10% with ribelsis okay all right dr mittal how do these drugs work at this point because a lot of the feedback that we've got is that it sort of reduces the noise in your brain when it comes to cravings when it comes to hunger pangs uh tell us how do these drugs work so all these drugs work via the glp1 pathway uh, glp1 is a hormone that's secreted from the intestine and acts on the pancreas as well as the brain whenever we eat food there is secretion of glp1 it acts endogenous glp1 acts on the brain to control our appetite and satiety it tells us when to stop eating these drugs act through that pathway and they act on the brain to tell us to stop eating and also to reduce our appetite so the primary weight reducing action of ozempic or vigovi or monjaro is why their brain action the other actions also like slowing the movement of food in the stomach uh, but those are all secondary the primary action responsible for weight loss is the brain action dr mittal now give us a sense if somebody walks into your clinic with diabetes and say is overweight as well at this point in time um give us what you are prescribing to them based on different bmi scenarios So for diabetes management in an overweight or obese persons GLP-1 drugs are the first line of choice now uh, more and more and as they become more easy to use 
and more accessible, they should be offered to most patients with diabetes who are overweight or obese. Okay, so would that be an... BMI cut off, yes. So those above 30, even without diabetes, would be candidates for these drugs. Those who have a BMI over 27 and have diabetes, you're talking about diabetes. So those above BMI 27 with diabetes will definitely be candidates and should be offered these drugs. Okay. So somebody who has a BMI between 25 and 29 and is not a diabetic, Correct. would they be eligible for these drugs? Ideally, we would like to look at the other causes, uh, why they are gaining weight. We need to look into their lifestyle and try our best to, you know, kind of make them lose weight with these other modifications rather than jumping on to the, uh, these drugs. Because uh, most of the times when they are in this weight category, something, some incidents would have happened recently or in least last two, three years or so because of which they have started gaining weight. For example, in a woman, it can be a postpartum condition. For someone else, it is a sedentary job which has recently been changed. Mm -hmm. For someone whose job, uh, uh, the working hours are so long that they are not finding time for the exercise, or recently they have changed their eating habits or something. So there is some factor because of which they have probably gained the weight, or they were overweight to start with for quite some time, but they have never taken uh, some effort to lose weight and most of the times the awareness that this BMI of 25 generally we label them as healthy hmm. rather than overweight or obese. Yeah. So we have to change that mindset. Most of the time if you look at average build wise it looks like okay this person is normal. So we probably have to change that definition in mind and this is probably the the best time in the uh, in the weight journey where if you are aware that this is not my ideal weight and this is a little overweight and if you just take care of small 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 factors you will definitely lose weight and we need not jump for these uh, medications for sake. Okay so in that case it's only lifestyle modifications and what if that same patient comes back to you and says you know I tried I lost 10 kgs after three years I put it back on now what do I do? So if in that category they have already tried everything. And they still don't have diabetes. Fine. Mm -hmm. If they have already tried uh, everything possible still they are unable to lose weight and they have some other comorbidities, not necessarily diabetes, but some hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea, or they have, uh, you know, weight related uh, issues. Then in that case, we might consider mm -hmm. for uh, till the time they can probably, you know, uh, continue their lifestyle and lead to a little weight loss, wherein they can just maintain the lost weight with the continued lifestyle modification. Okay. Well, Dr. Mittal, what about somebody who walks into your clinic and has a BMI of over 40? is morbidly obese, what would you recommend to them? So anyone who comes in with a BMI of more than 40, the first choice is always bariatric surgery. Uh, we've, been, we've been saying this for years and years and years, but the problem is that most patients do not agree to go under the knife. So I think uh, it's a huge task. And, you know, such patients keep coming back. We keep discussing uh, back and forth, back and forth, lifestyle, a different diet. Now, at least if they disagree for surgery, we can help them. Maybe we won't bring them to target. It's very important to understand that if you lose 5 kilograms or 10 kilograms, you're helping yourself a lot. You need not need, always reach your target body weight. So if patient is unwilling for bariatric surgery, I would certainly put them on the GLP-1 drugs. In addition to this, there are patients who have to, who have agreed for bariatric surgery, but where the surgeon wants a little bit of weight loss to make the surgery easier or less difficult. And in those cases also, we are using these drugs quite liberally in preparing patients for bariatric surgery. So there is a role in those over 40 BMI, but there, of course, the first line treatment is bariatric surgery. Okay, doc. Dr. Sonali, what about you? Um, you know, somebody comes in as they, and says 110 kgs. What would you recommend to them? So again, as I discussed, we need to start from the beginning, find out the causes. Yeah. And depending upon the choice, basically, as uh, Dr. Mittal has rightly uh, uh, mentioned that many individuals, despite their BMI being even, you know, 44, 48, also sometimes they, they do not agree for the surgery mm -hmm. most of the times. So in those cases, we might put them on this. So do these drugs work effectively on them? Yes. Okay. So basically the individual variation would be there, mm -hmm. but these drugs which I have shown this uh, significant weight reduction in 
in other uh, BMI ranges, they will also have the effect in this BMI range.